Coming up on First at Four, disgraced attorney Alex Murdaugh learns his fate. Plus, a Vietnam War veteran receives the nation's highest military honor. And stormy skies slowly pushing out of the region, but very gusty winds are headed in. Those details straight ahead as First at Four continues right now. Mountain News First at Four continues. Many folks in the mountains have seen high winds and strong storms within the last couple of hours. The severe weather has left nearly 250,000 customers now without power throughout the state. Most of those are in western Kentucky, but we are starting to see more in our part of the world, especially in the Cumberland Valley. Our first alert weather day continues as meteorologist Evan Hatter continues to track the latest information. Evan. That's right, Steve. The, the threat continues as we head through the nighttime hours. Now, the threat for strong thunderstorms continues to push away. The tornado threat continues to push away. But we have very strong winds on the back side of this line of storms as the low pressure stays very close that we're going to have to watch through the evening hours. Here's pinpoint Doppler right now. Severe thunderstorm warnings in place for parts of Morgan, Elliott into Lawrence and northern McGoffin and Johnson, northern Johnson counties. For that line of thunderstorms, it's pushing right on through downtown Sandy Hook right now and heading toward Ashland. Uh, we're going to continue to track that off to the east and the northeast. There's the update to the warning there. This is moving to the north and east. We average it about 60 miles per hour. So let's go ahead and put that on the track there for about 60 miles an hour. Willard, Kentucky by 435. It's in Louisa by the end of the hour. It's already in Huntington, West Virginia by the top of the hour. And we're well into West Virginia uh, heading over toward Charleston here within the next hour or so. That's how fast these storms are moving. Further on to the south, we're watching some scattered shower activity and a few thunderstorms there in the parts of Harlan County, parts of Letcher County, parts of uh, Perry County into uh, County. None of that is severe, but you could get the potential for a 60 to set or a, at least 40 to 50 mile per hour winds as that pushes on through much of Pike County seeing just rain right now. Further off to the west, not much to worry about except the wind. Tornado watches continue to get paired back to the west. Uh, we'll likely see our counties there expire by five o'clock, and I'm not sure the rest of the area makes it until seven o'clock with a tornado watch. Level two slight risk for severe weather through the evening hours, but the severe thunderstorm threat ends. Middle and upper 60s to near 70 out there. That's not necessarily a good sign because we are seeing very gusty winds where we're getting the warming air. 31 mile per hour gusts in Jackson, 45 in London. You may notice central Kentucky looks a little more cluttered on this map than it usually does because they're seeing very high wind gusts. We're gusting right now to 55 in Lexington, 53 in the state capital, 62 mile per hour gusts over in Bardstown, 60 mile per hour in uh, at Campbellsville, 63 at Muhammad Ali International Airport in Louisville. So the high wind warning continues for everybody through the rest of the night. 50 to 60 mile per hour winds possible with perhaps higher gusts in the higher elevations. It's something we'll continue to watch as we head through the evening hours. Steve, I'll have the latest breakdown once more coming up in a few minutes. All right, Evan, thank you. In other news, a judge in South Carolina sentenced disbarred attorney Alex Murdaugh to life in prison without parole today for the 2021 murders of his wife and son. The sentence came less than 24 hours after a jury convicted him of the crimes. It was a stunning fall for a man whose family held positions of power in that county for decades. CBS's Nikki Batiste has the latest from the Carlton County Courthouse in Walterboro, South Carolina. Alec Murdahl was led out of the court in handcuffs moments after he learned his fate. In the murder of your wife, Maggie Murdahl, I sentence you for the term of the rest of your natural life. For the murder of Paul Murdahl, I sentence you to prison for murdering him. Moments before, the disgraced lawyer again insisted he did not kill his wife, Maggie, or 22-year-old son, Paul, in June of 2021. I'm innocent. I would never hurt my wife, Maggie, and I would never hurt my son, Paul Paul. The judge noted Murdahl's prominence in the community, saying the attorney had practiced law before him and that a portrait of Murdahl's grandfather, a former prosecutor, had hung in the courthouse before it was removed to ensure a fair trial. It was especially heartbreaking for me to 
see you go in the media from being a, uh, a grieving father to being the person indicted and convicted of killing them. It took jurors less than three hours Thursday to convict Murdahl on all counts. Guilty verdict. During the trial, Murdahl took the stand in his own defense and admitted stealing millions from his clients and firm. He also admitted he lied when he said he wasn't at the crime scene minutes before the murders. I think it hurt him 100%. I, I think it ultimately it hurt him in the end. But the defense says Murdahl had no choice once the jury heard about his alleged financial crimes. They would never, ever, ever acquit him after that. Murdahl's lawyers say they plan to appeal. Nikki Batiste, CBS News, Colleton County, South yes, Carolina. The victim's family members, including the parents and sister of Maggie Murdahl, declined to give impact statements before sentencing. Norfolk Southern Corporation is apologizing to the village of East Palestine, Ohio, for the train derailment and its resulting chemical spill. A railway company executive spoke to a crowd during a town hall last night. He appeared to show some contrition from the, con the company in the wake of February's fiery derailment of a train carrying toxic chemicals. That wreck and the resulting leak has since spawned health concerns in the community. We are sorry. We're very sorry for what we feel Wilson says the company was planning to clean up the site and get rid of the contamination, but that could be easier said than done. Officials are still trying to understand the extent of exposure to the area. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says it will take their team about three weeks to collect information and get a complete picture on the risk of chemical exposures to East Palestine residents. Brian Flores' racial discrimination lawsuit against the National Football League is now headed to court. Yesterday, a federal judge ruled that Flores' lawsuit against the league and three teams, the Denver Broncos, the New York Giants, and the Houston Texans, can proceed to trial instead of going to arbitration. Flores accuses the NFL of only hiring a small percentage of coaches who are black and other discriminatory hiring practices. The next pretrial conference is set for March 24th. Retired Army Colonel Paris Davis, one of the first black officers in the Green Berets, received the nation's highest military honor Friday during a ceremony at the White House. CBS's Willie James Inman has more. A Vietnam War veteran finally gets acknowledged for his heroic deeds. Retired Colonel Paris Davis received the Medal of Honor during a White House ceremony more than half a century overdue. It may be the most consequential day since I've been president. It's an incredible man. On June 18, 1965, during the Battle of Bang Son in Vietnam, Davis was hit by a grenade and gunfire, but still risked his own life to save the lives of two of his soldiers. And he then ignored an order to retreat in order to save the life of a third. Captain Davis, commander, gave him a direct order. Get on board. Davis' response was just as direct. Sir, he said, I'm just not going to leave. I still have an American out there. Though Colonel Davis joined the U.S. Army 14 years after President Harry Truman desegregated the military, because of the racism that he faced, he would be forced to wait nearly six decades before receiving the nation's highest military honor. Volunteering to serve a country that in many places still refused to serve people who look like him. Davis's commanding officer, Billy Cole, immediately nominated him for the Medal of Honor. But the records mysteriously vanished not once, but twice. A 1969 military review did not reveal any file on Davis. But you know what Captain Davis said after learning he would finally receive the Medal of Honor? Quote, America was behind me. He never lost faith, which I find astounding. Davis is now one of just 65 Americans still alive to receive the honor, an honor that he says he shares with his Special Forces soldiers. Thank you. Davis retired from the military in 1985. Back here at home, one Prestonsburg man is displaying his passion at the Mountain Arts Center patch by patch. Clifford Bruce Austin is a Civil War history buff who used his love of stories to stitch together a new hobby, fixing old sewing machines and using them to quilt new pieces. Some of his more than 100 projects can be found on display in the Star City 
lining a wall of the Mountain Arts Center. This is an outstanding place to get to do such a, you know, a, a demonstration as this of you know, what I've been doing. First time I've put up this many of them in one location, and, and we're blessed here in Prestonsburg, really, to have such a place as this. The display also comes in time for National Quilt Month, which is celebrated by quilters every March. Hear more about Austin's path to patchwork coming up at 6. Coming up, as First and Four continues, we're already seeing that tornado watch trimmed back to the west. The details on when we see some very gusty winds, though, ahead. Plus, one American car manufacturer is resuming production on one of its more well-known models. 